press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Namaste children. Let us continue with the topic organisms and populations. In our last class we discussed about growth models in that we discussed logistic growth and exponential growth. So, in this class we will discuss about the population interactions. As I told already there are six types of interactions. Before going to that we will discuss life history variation. So, life history variation. So, according to Darwin, uh, when the survival of species, fitness of species in a particular habitat is based upon the strength, struggle for existence. So, that we denoted as R, intrinsic rate of natural increase. So, here the life, is, in the life history variation we see the animals which breed only once in their lifetime or the animals which breed many types in their lifetime. So, based on breeding, so we see animals which breed only once in their lifetime. So, this is really a competitive question that is Pacific Salmon Fish and Bamboo. So, that they breed only once in their lifetime. So, animals which breed many times between day birth to death or during their lifespan. Example for this birds and mammals. So, this is very important they will ask you in your competitive name a plant which breed only name a tree which breed only once in their lifetime bamboo animal and the specific salmon fish and the very big understood and based on size of an organism one more is there that is based on Based on based upon size of an organisms, we have small size. Organisms with increase number. So, the smaller size organisms then have increased number. Examples for this we have oysters and pelagic fish. Pelagic small fish and another one is large size organisms which are less in number which are less in number large if the organism size is large the number is less they give rise to less number less population size population density will be less if the size is less their population density will be more so example again for this birds and mammals understood 
if the organism size is less the population size will be more if the organism size is more the population size or population density will be less understood next we'll move with population interactions so as i told there are two types of population interactions one is intra specific interaction another one is inter specific into inter specific interaction see intra and here inter intra means see the interaction what you are listening to my lesson and i am teaching this is an interaction when the interaction occurs between the same species that is called intra specific interaction here interaction occurs between the same species example deer and deer lion and lion so there are examples the interaction occurs between the same species that is nothing but intra specific interaction if it occurs between the different species if if interaction occurs between the different species then it is called in this is very important that is called inter specific interaction example lion between lion and deer or between cat and mouse so these are all examples for inter specific interaction understood so that there are two types of interactions intra and inter intra means when the interaction occurs between the same species inter means when interaction occurs between the different species understood that's the difference between intra and inter specific populations intra and inter intra and inter specific interactions among the population then coming to types of interaction we have mainly six types of interaction species a so again this will come for 3 marks so when both species are benefited plus denotes benefit beneficial or benefited beneficial minus denotes harmful and zero denotes neutral and zero denotes neutral in this population interactions understood so plus here species a is benefited and species b is also benefited benefited this type of population interaction is called mutualism this type of population interaction is called mutualism like lichens ne first lo didira between the fungus and algae so that 
the type of interaction is called mutualism when both the species are armed see species a is also armed species b is also armed the type of interaction is called competition the type of interaction is called competition then one species is benefited one is harm it is called predation so in the predation one species may be predator is benefited where prey is harm predator means the organism which eats the prey hagagi one species is going to be benefited other one is harmed and one more one species is benefited and other one is harmed the type of interaction is parasitism parasitism so here see one species is again benefited another one is arm which one is benefited here parasite so in human health and disease round ball it is an endoparasite so the parasite is going to be benefited whereas the host is arm because it is going to get its nutrition from the host alva hagagi one species which one is benefited here parasite is benefited whereas the host organism is arm that type of interaction is called parasitism then we have one species is benefited other one is neither arm nor benefited other one is neither arm nor benefited east that type of interaction is called commensalism that type of interaction is called commensalism and one more one species is benefited other one is arm that type of interaction is called commensalism so for the commensalism so orchid growing as an epiphyte on mango tree is an example for commensalism amensalism we in the microbes we know that the penicillinium notatum prevents the growth of staphylococci that is examples for amensalism understood this will come for three marks so based when both species are benefited that type of interaction is called mutualism when both species are harm that type of interaction is called competition one is benefited other one is harm that we see in both predation and parasitism and in commensalism one species is benefited another other one is neither harm nor benefited that is called commensalism amensalism only one species is benefited other one is harm that is called amensalism so now we'll go with the in detail about this interactions today we'll discuss between the we'll discuss about predation and amensalism so in this we'll go with the predation so here in the predation in this type of interactions we we are going to talk about with predators and prey so predators are usually larger organisms prey are usually smaller organisms so these predators are going to eat this organisms that is prey 
predators are going to eat prey. So this is how we are going to define predation. It is a type of biological interaction. It is a type of biological interaction in which large size organisms that is predators which are beneficially a predators will eat small size organisms that is prey. So they are harm. So it is a type of biological means between the living organisms. It is a type of biological interaction in which large size organisms which we call it as predators will eat small size organisms they are called as prey. So in this type of interaction one is benefited other one is armed. Then what is the role of predators in ecology? So predators play a very important role in ecology mainly by controlling prey population under they control the population size of prey. So importance of predators. So importance of predator in, in ecology is it helps predator acts as a conduits of energy. That means it helps to transfer it helps to transfer energy from lower tropic level level to higher tropic level in food chain. In that way the acts as a conduits of energy. Conduits of energy means predators act as a conduits of energy in an ecosystem how by transferring energy from lower tropic level to higher tropic level as we know that the plants were eaten by herbivores and herbivores were eaten by carnivores like this energy is transferring from one tropic level to another tropic level so here the predators helps to transfer energy from lower tropic levels to higher tropic levels in food chain. Another important point about predators means they control the population of prey. They act as a biological the act is a biological control agent by controlling prey population by controlling prey population So, for this example is introduction of introduction of prickly pear. 
पियर कैक्टस प्रिकली पियर कैक्टस इंटू ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन द इयर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज by the introduction of prickly pear cactus into australia in the year 1920s so suppose see the act as a biological control agent by controlling prey population suppose if lions were not there it means the population of deer is going to be increased and they are going to spoil the vegetation so there is a need to control the prey population hagagi this predators are very helpful in balancing the ecosystem if predators are not there means it leads to instability of ecosystem for this example introduction of prickly pear cactus into australia in the year 1920s they from the mexico they introduced prickly pear cactus into the australia for a natural fencing for a natural fencing and the belly so when they introduced prickly pear cactus into australia within a shorter period this cactus acquired large area and it started creating a problem why it acquired large area because of the absence of predator because of the absence of predator which is going to eat cactus in australia so australia dili cactus tinnon the predators irlilla because it is a exotic species in australia this is not native to australia it is a exotic species to australia hagagi there were no predators to control this population that's why this species what they did what it has uh led to it led to the destruction of vegetation by acquiring more land it started increasing in its number to control its population again they introduced the predator from where they brought this cactus ellinda itana cactus na thagond banidro allinda again what they brought they brought the predator cactus feeding predator that is moth is also called cochineal insect cochineal insect cactus feeding predator or cochineal insect were introduced from where they brought this cactus from that country they brought this predator and introduced into australia after that only the population came into control that population came into control that is a example for how the predators helps in the controlling prey population you have to remember this year also for your competitive exam in which year they introduced cactus into australia in the year 1920 and how the cactus population came into control after introducing cactus feeding predator from the native that means from where they brought the cactus there only they brought the predator to bring the prickly pear cactus population into control understood so this based on this only in agriculture we have biological pest control method biological pest control method in agriculture biotechnology and odi dira nevo and also in microbes so biological pest control method in agriculture is based on predator and prey relationship predator and so by this relationship by based on predator and prey relationship so in agriculture we use, we are going to use 
biological pest control understood that is the another important thing about predators and they also helps predators also helps to uh, control species diversity to maintain species diversity in a community community they helps to maintain species diversity in a community by preventing competition between competing prey species between competing prey species so this is another important role played by the predators they help to maintain species diversity in a community by preventing competition by between by preventing competition between competing prey species so example so paisaster fish paisaster starfish they removed from the inter tidal sea coast in the rocky mountain inter tidal sea coast in america in south america so in south america in in the rocky uh, sea coast they removed paisaster starfish what they what they did they removed paisaster starfish in the intertidal sea coast area so intertidal is a area between the high tide and low tide it is an area between the high tide and low tide intertidal means area between high tide and low tide so what they did they removed the paisaster starfish from the intertidal sea coast area in the rocky sea coast uh, south american coastally so when when they remove this paisaster starfish that led to the extinction of that led to the extinction of 10 species of invertebrates in that habitat so what happens when they introduced this paisaster we can call it as a keystone species ya kendra keystone species suppose see your 10 invertebrate species will be there like this so there are different different 10 invertebrates there are invertebrates and this paisaster starfish is was controlling this species iden martirate because this was eating this species hagage enagirutte 
competition was less among this prey species. Competition was less among this prey species. Understood? So, this is one more fish and this is one type of organism. Understood? So, when Pisaster was there in that intertidal coast, the competition among these species were less. When they removed this Pisaster from that intertidal sea coast area, what happens? The competition occurs between the prey species. They started competing for the same resources. Because predator illa andaga, the population of prey also increase. When population of spray, when the population of prey increases, they started competing for themselves for the food. They started competing for the food between them that led to the extinction of species. Understood? So when they remove Pisaster starfish from the intertidal sea coast area, that leads to the extinction of that leads that led to the extinction of ten species of invertebrates within a shorter period of time because of competition between the prey species because of the competition between the prey species that's why it is called disaster we can call it as keystone species actually it in, in the presence of disaster we see 10 different species of invertebrate in that it helps to maintain species diversity Adilla and the Genaito extension of invertebrates occurred. Alva Hagavi, as it is responsible for maintaining the species diversity in a community, uh, it is it plays a very important role in ecosystem. Understood? So, it, they help to maintain species diversity in a community. How? By preventing competition between competing prey species. Understood? So, they remove disaster starfish that led to the extinction of 10 species of invertebrates and predators are prudent in nature if the predators are more in number what happens If predator's number is more, that led to that will lead to the extinction of prey species. If prey species become extinct, again the predators will also become extinct. Understood? So there should be a balance between the predators and prey in an ecosystem for the stability of that ecosystem. So in that condition, we see some defense mechanism developed by prey to avoid detection from their predators. So, in this, in animals we see cryptically coloration. So, in animals we see cryptically coloration or camouflaged. That means the color of organism will blend or it will be same as that surrounding environment where that organism is present. So that avoids the detection of prey from the predators that is nothing but cryptically coloration of camouflaged. Example you can see 
in frog, grasshoppers, etc. So, this coloration among the prey avoid the detection from the predators. One more is the example is monarch butterfly. This monarch butterfly is distasteful to its predator. It is distasteful to its predator. How it is distasteful to its predator? It is going to eat poisonous weeds during caterpillar stage. Because in its body chemical substance is present that is poisonous to predator. That gives uh, this taste that means it will not give taste to the predators. So monarch butterfly gives distasteful to its predator by acquiring chemicals during caterpillar stage by eating poisonous weeds by eating poisonous weeds so during its life cycle when it was in caterpillar stage then it will start eating poisonous weeds this will give this taste to its predator so that they will not eat this butterfly. Predators means birds here. Predators means birds. Or monarch butterfly. Predators are birds. So this is how they are going to develop defense mechanism to protect from the predators. One is cryptically coloration. Another one is acquiring poisonous chemical substances. So for that example is monarch butterfly. It is distasteful to, distasteful to its predator because of the presence of chemical substance in its body. So when it is going to acquire that, when during its life cycle, that is during caterpillar stage, it is going to acquire that chemical substance by eating poisonous weeds. So these two are examples of defense mechanism in animals. We will go with plants now. In plants we see thorns in cactus Opentia, etc. So that thorns prevent the predators to eat these plants. Understood? So mulmulene irathala. So in Opentia, you see leaves are modified into thorns, spines. Leaves are modified into spines. So thorns in cactus, spines in Opentia. So that prevents eating them by the by their predators and also chemical substance chemical substance is also produced by plants because they cannot move from one area to another area to protect them from predators so in plants they produce chemical substances which are poisonous to predators some plants produces chemical substances which are poisonous to predators. Some plants produce chemical substances which are poisonous to predators. Examples for that is chemical substance 
on flanks. Cardiac glycosides produced by plant called Thanotropis. It's also called milkweed. Produced by plant called Thanotropis. And the Gida. Illa Billy Eke Gida, Kemp Eke Gida, and now Ganeshan Gahuna, Sreshtanta. Uh, use Martivala that is calotropis. So that plant will produce a chemical substance called cardiac glycosides. Adikanodi Asugulu atva even Puri make a dhyaudunu eke gidanatinala because in that plant we see a chemical substance called cardiac glycosides. If they eat that leaf that will kill or they it will that chemical will disturb the physiological some physiological functions in that organisms some other chemical substances opium produced by plant papaver somnifera next nicotine produced by Nicotia tobacco Vinyl is produced by Sinkons of Signalis. And one more we have Caffeine is produced by. Kefia Arabica and one more strike nine is produced by Strikonus so these are some plants which produces chemical substance so Calotropis will produce chemical substance called cardiac glycosides. Papavars omniferums genus capital species small. Papavars omniferum produces opium. Nicotia tobacum produces nicotine. Synchonus offici officinalis produces quinine. Kefia arabica produces caffeine. Strychonus nux vomica produces trichnine. So these are all chemical substances produced by plants to avoid predation from the predators, to avoid grazing or browsing from the predators. If the predators eat these plants, when this chemical substance produced by these plants will disturb the physiological functions in the predators sometimes it may kill predators also like this predators play a very important role in ecology then we'll move with another type of population interaction that is commensalism so predators only predators helps to maintain to check to maintain or to check prey population that means they control prey population they acts as a conduits of energy that means they helps in a transfer of energy from one tropic level to another tropic level and predators helps to maintain species diversity in a community so like this predators have important role in a ecosystem so one more population interaction we have is amensolism here in the amensolism one species will be benefited 
is benefited and other species is one species is benefited and one species is harmed. So, in, the in this type of interaction one species will be benefited other one is sorry it is not benefited neither are nor one species is a and other species is neither harm or not benefited. So, understood. One species is benefited, other species is neither are not benefited. Example, so we can see uh, penicillium notatum. prevents the growth of staphylococci. So, in a culture plate, in a culture plate, this penicillium notatum will prevents the growth of staphylococci. This is penicillinium notatum. This, this are staphylococci. So, this penicillium notatum prevents the growth of staphylococci. Here penicillinium is neither arm nor benefited. Another one is arm. Which one is arm? Staphylococci is um, understood. In the amensolism, one species is armed and other species is neither armed nor benefited. Which species is armed here? Staphylococci is armed, whereas Pencilium notatum is neither armed nor benefited. This type of interaction is called amensolism. In amensolism, we see in this type of interaction, one species is going to be harmed, other species is neither are nor benefited. Example, Penicillium notatum and Staphylococci. In this culture, Penicillium notatum will grow in its size or number, it will grow in its number, increase in its number by destroying Staphylococci. That means Staphylococci is armed here. But penicillinium is neither a nor benefited. So, this type of interaction is called amensolism. So, in the amensolism, one species is a, other one is neither a nor benefited. One species is a, and other one is neither a nor benefited. Understood? So, this is about today's class. In the next class, we will discuss about competition and commensalism. Thank you.